Hello there everybody, Sam Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the Model Railway News. Here we are in September, I cannot believe we're in September already. Autumn is well and truly here and I guess soon that means we will be heading towards the very busiest time of the Model Railway's calendar. I'm not going to say the C word, alright, because people get cross if you say that too early. That's strange actually, isn't it? Why do they do that? Now, next month I will say the C word next month and then sod them if they're cross about it. But anyway, today we're going to focus on this month which I think we should be doing. Some cool stuff to show you actually. We've got some new stock, uh, not an awful lot, but some, and also some very exciting product developments, particularly from Hornby. I'm very much excited about those. But first we'll start off with what is new at Hornby. There are one or two new products that have just come into stock over the last month. The first one is a very nice one, Princess Royal Queen Maud, as you can see in the Era 5 BR Green. I wanted to single that one out because it just reminds me of those old Triang ones. Uh, I'll put a clip up now for you. Yeah, it's just so amazing to see how far Hornby have come, particularly on their Princess models uh, from those Triang years. So yeah, those are in stock if you want to check them out. Lots of other stuff in stock. We've got the Centenary Merton Terrier, uh, which looks fantastic in the LBSC livery there. Absolutely love that. You've got the Great Northern Number no. 1 Timplate 04 locomotive in O gauge they are coming in now although it's a shame because they all sold out so if you haven't pre-ordered one I guess like me you won't be getting one which is a shame and also the Duchess of Athol has come into stock as well although I think I mentioned that one uh, last month but yet yeah, now it has been released also the remaining large prairies have come into stock including a very very pretty one look at this one this is the BR lined green which seems as though it's one of the most popular look on Hornby's website it's already sold out so yeah act fast if you want to head to one of the retailers and pick those up um, mine had a lot of problems and other people's did as well but maybe you'll be lucky and they certainly do look great nice ornaments I suppose if not anyway the exciting stuff from Hornby comes from this month's engine shed so let's take a look at this so we have some major updates on the hush hush uh, first up you've got the first shots from the tooling these are all of the parts laid out as you can see and there's an awful lot of them it's also very interesting to see which parts are made of metal as you can quite clearly see uh, the chassis in particular looks incredibly chunky doesn't it look at that area all around the sort of rear pony truck all made of metal those are going to be quite weighty models and that's very good to see Next, they showed what I believe is a running sample. I don't think they said specifically, but I think it's a running sample. They're talking about running samples around it. Um, it's all fully assembled, as you can see, which presumably means if the thing works properly, we might actually see some videos on that at some point on Hornby's channel. So that will be something to look out for. Next up, there are some renders. Look at these. Now, these renders actually show the fully decorated models, and they've also updated them on their product pages as well. So when you search for the Hush Hush on their website, they are the first thing you see. And look at that in the LNER grey. I mean, if the models look half as good as that, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic release. And still very impressive is the LNER green as well. A bit more conventional, that obviously, but still looking absolutely fantastic. And that's not all. There are more product developments from Hornby 2. You have the same for the rebuilt Hush Hush. Look at that, that looks good as well, doesn't it? Just like an A4, you just have to look a little bit closely and then you're like, oh no, that's not an A4. You've got the Thompson A2 slash 2 and A2 slash 3s in there. So there's a, a bumper update and that's still not all. Look at this, you've got an update on the uh, 2MT. You know, that one that's almost entirely made of metal. I have showed a sample of this before, I believe on a previous episode, but this one supposedly has some more of the details fitted. And so that gives a better idea really of what the model is going to to look like so some amazing locos are on the way from Hornby um, whether or not these are going to be with us for Christmas as we thought they would be earlier on in the year remains to be seen but whenever they come it's going to be very very exciting so yeah check them out if you're interested this month at Rails of Sheffield there have been loads and loads of updates not all of them good unfortunately so we'll start off with the sort of miserable ones to start with and then we'll get on to the others which are more exciting basically as far as the negative news goes they posted this on their website which is essentially says that they will no longer be stocking Hornby products. Now they haven't provided a reason why, they, I suppose they don't have to, they may never do, but essentially what it means is that you will no longer be able to order Hornby products from them besides what they already have in stock. And this goes for pre-orders even if you've already had them confirmed and it also goes for items that are not in stock and due back in stock. No more Hornby stuff. Now sure there are other retailers out there, that is true, so it's not like you're not going to be able to get Hornby stuff anymore. However, from a customer's point of view that is one less choice that we have. 
our choice of retailers has now been reduced yet again, which is not a good thing for the hobby. So hopefully, I mean, it ain't going to be anytime soon, but hopefully Hornby and Rails can sort this out. Maybe one day they will make up and hopefully we'll see products back from Hornby at Rails one day. But at the moment, as far as we know, no more at Rails, which is a shame. Anyway, it ain't all bad news, though, because some of the remaining Rails Terriers are finally coming into stock. Now, annoyingly, it's still not all examples. It's basically just the green liveries which are in stock now. So look at this. They're nice, though. We've got the Southern Lined Green, which looks lovely, actually. Very nice. And then you've got the similar WC and PR Lined Green, which is also very, very handsome, isn't it? And then a more unconventional, at least where Terriers are concerned, livery is the Great Western Green, as you can see. So yeah, it's all greens. If you like green, you probably going to have a good month at Rails of Sheffield because the Green Terriers are now in stock. And there's more from Rails as well because they've shown some livery samples of their upcoming Wainwright D-Class. Now the photos are not good photos unfortunately. They don't necessarily show the models in their best light which is a bit strange. Hopefully we'll get some better photos one day but the photos that we have do show off the models reasonably nicely. You can see the SECR green version which is worthy of note I think. Notice the dome and the safety valves as well. They actually have that high shine to them which I think looks really really good. Uh, some locos don't have that and they look a little bit dull don't they? They look very very good. You've also got the southern mantle green which again some people have criticized a little bit saying that the green looks completely off. I personally think it's just the photos. The saturation looks like it's been messed about. They're not the best photos. I'm, I, I would be confident that the green will look better on the final model, but who knows? Who knows? We're only going on a photo. Among other black liveries, you have this, the BR lined black. Look at that. How handsome and how different that looks given the fact that it's the same loco. Very, very nice. And you've also got the fetching SECR grey as well, which is a favourite of mine. I do like grey locos for some reason, so that's one to look out for as well. There's still no price announced which is a bit annoying i'm not going to be ordering until there's a price in case i end up spending 500 pounds uh, they they do have the aim to keep them below 200 if that helps but fingers crossed that will still be the case the initial delivery was to be in quarter three of 2020 which is now i'm guessing it's not going to be that no in fact no they are saying now 2021 with no quarter mentioned so we don't know when in 2021 hopefully though they will be on the first half of 2021 either way can't wait to see them they do promise to be very impressive models indeed, I'd say. Last month at Hatton's, I was extremely excited to discover those 3D renders of their Genesis coaches that they were showing off. Well, this month they've gone a step further and they've improved it even more by applying the liveries to these 3D renders as well. Look at this one, look at the wheels. You just see these little details that were not obvious before. That is absolutely fantastic. And there are quite a few versions available now that you can look at with the liveries on. So you've got the LBSC version here. Well, look at that. I mean, these all look fantastic. It's actually quite dangerous for the wallet, isn't it? It, looking at these. You've got the SECR version, again very very nice, unusual livery that one. Uh, the Great Northern version as you can see and also a Great Western version like I showed you at the start. Not all versions have the 3D renders and liveries available at the moment but hopefully they will follow so keep an eye on those. I can recommend checking it out, it's fun just to look around. You can look inside them like I did last month. You can take a look at any of the detail you like and it's really really interesting so check that out. Can't wait to see what comes next on those Genesis coaches. Dapol have had a very, very busy month this month in both Double O and O Gauge. They've announced some new coaches in O Gauge, which is fantastic, and they're not the kind that we usually see either. They're these lovely LBSC four wheeled coaches, which really seem to be in fashion at the moment, don't they? Now, these are going to be produced in the UK, apparently, so does that mean 3D printed? I'm not too sure. They start at £93.50, that's the version without any lights. Uh, I suppose it seems about right for O-Gage. And I can't tell whether that's going to be 3D printed or not. I would have said they'd be more expensive than that if they were 3D printed, but who knows? Who knows? There are, however, going to be a huge number of variations. So you've got a brake third, third class, first and second. I mean, check them out. There is quite a lot to choose from. There's also an optional extra to have light bars fitted on either DC or DCC. They also have some new O-Gage wagons in stock. Check out these. You've got the seven and eight plank wagons. And again, there's a huge range of these as well. It's far from just one or two. I love the sun coal. Look at that. That's very interesting. That makes me want to buy one, actually, which is less good. They are only a smidge under £40, which I guess makes them reasonably expensive. But hey, if that's something you want, then you now can get one. There are also versions with rails to follow, as you can see, which I think look even cooler. Adds a little bit of extra height to them. I think that would look nice against my existing wagons, which I think are just six or seven planks without the rails on top. So yeah, that's pretty good. 
Double O Gauge, they've announced a new batch of their impressive silver bullet wagons. And look at this one in the chrome. That is an effect I don't think I've ever seen before on any of my models that I own. Absolutely phenomenal looking that. And there's also this version as well, which looks equally impressive, but I guess for different reasons. It's all rusty and weathered, as you can see. I don't know which looks better. I mean, the weathered is very impressive because of the weathering, but that chrome is just fantastic as well. So, I mean, yeah, let me know down in the comments, which one would you go for? And maybe I will go for one. Okay, almost done with DAPO because they've also announced a new batch of their KIB bogey wagons with the telescopic hood. I think these had to be mentioned because they are so cool. So they have this sliding roof and body section which allows you to realistically load and unload the wagons. And the best part is they're even cheaper than those chrome wagons at uh, just £29.75. So very exciting stuff. DAPO, what a busy month they've had, particularly for rolling stock. Can't wait to see some of this stuff come out. Next up then, a bit of an update from Acura Scale, who I don't really cover that often in these news videos. So let me know in the comments, would you like to see more Acura Scale updates? Yeah, I think I should because a lot of their locos and rolling stock look really, really promising. Anyway, this update was on their upcoming Class 37. As you can see here, they have just provided a whole wealth of information on how the model's going, what they're doing, all that sort of stuff. And they also stress just how much variation there is between the different versions of the Class 37 that they're producing. Quite amazing, actually. Now, they were talking about delays and apologizing for them all through the post. Um, however, it does sound as though the tooling is complete and they're expecting the first tooling sample in November. And despite everything that's happened this year with the pandemic, they're still expecting delivery on the models, as you can see here, in Q2 2021. Now, to say they haven't yet received the first tooling sample yet, that is really quite impressive, isn't it? So, yeah, it's not too bad at all, given everything that's going on. So, you might remember a few months ago, I talked about Murphy models and their upcoming CIA Class 121. I covered it in this video, if you want to check that out. Well, now the first of those models is actually now in stock over here in the UK. You can get them at Hatton. In fact, links in the description for all of this stuff. Uh, it's the CIE original grey livery, which looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? Very unusual livery. It's grey again. Got to love the grey. They are quite expensive at £149.50, but they're also very unique looking, aren't they? So I don't know. I'm in two minds. Should I check one out? It's a manufacturer I've never tried before, and that's something that's quite enticing to me. So let me know in the comments. Should I get one? Would you like to see a review? If you would, maybe I'll do it. But for now, I'm not too sure. Finally then, let's talk a little bit about the polls from this month's videos. First up, I did a video on my collection of Pacifics. I showed 50 of them, but I only ran a small selection. And of the locos I ran, I asked you guys to vote on your favourite. And here are the results. Now, all of the locos did pretty badly, except one of them, who had the vast majority of the votes. And that, of course, was the Flying Scotsman. So if there was any doubt whatsoever over the popularity, the continuing popularity of the Flying Scotsman, hopefully this will We'll put that to rest and also as you can see the least popular or joint least popular i guess was the britannia and the a2 a1 so there we go i guess now we know which pacifics are most hated as well as most loved Next up then, I posted a little question to ask you guys, which was the most detailed diesel? Now, this is a strange question, I know. Basically, I posted a review of the Hornbeat Class 56. Here's a little bit of it. Click on it up on the top right corner if you want to see the video. And I decided that it was probably the most detailed loco I owned, at least diesel loco. But lots of people in the comments were saying, you need to try A, B, C, D. These are also incredibly well detailed. So I put some of those suggestions into the poll and asked you guys to vote basically on which one was the most detailed and as you can see the answer was quite interesting so 69% nice voted for the 08 shunter from Hornby and I must try one I've never actually owned a Hornby 08 besides the railroad ones apparently they're very very good so I'll have to try those out so thanks for that that's, that's a good recommendation finally then I did a video on my collection and I asked you guys is there anything you'd like to see me review or re-review and I put some options out there and as you can see the vast majority again this was a landslide voted for the Bully Pacifics. Now there are one or two of Hornby's Bully Pacifics that I haven't actually covered. Uh, let's see, it's the Unrebuilt Merchant Navy. Never looked at one of those and I think there are some supposed to be coming out. They were supposed to have been released about two years ago. Still waiting for them but when they come I might pick one up. And there's also a Rebuilt Battle of Britain which I know 
but is it Adam's been asking for? So Adam, you might get your wish. I'm actually going to look into getting at least one of those two. Anyway, that is about it for the Model Railway news. Thank you so much for tuning in. If there's any news that you're aware of this month that I haven't covered and you think I should have, uh, do let me know what that is down in the comments and I will consider it for next month. For now though, again, thank you for watching. Have a really safe month. Look after yourselves and I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right, cheers folks. Take care.